Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you a couple ways that you can remove or key out a background or objects in your video clip without relying on having a green screen in your video. So the two tools we're going to be using in this video are going to be the HSL Cure and the Luma Cure, both of which you can find in the Effects Library, Open Effects, and then going down to Resolve Effects Key inside of the Effects Library. So in order to use these, we just need to drag one onto the clip. So for this jellyfish clip, you can see that the background is very dark and that the jellyfish are glowing with light. So this is a pretty good candidate for using the Luma Keyer. So I'm going to drag the Luma Keyer onto this jellyfish clip. And then we go to the inspector in the top right, effects, Luma Keyer. And then, and then we need to select our target um, for the Luma Keyer. So this is going to be basically looking at the brightness amount that we want to remove. In this case, that's going to be the background. So select the pick tool and then left click on the and then left click on the brightness area you want to remove. So when you do that, you should see most of the background across your clip get removed, especially if it's very consistent in its brightness. As you can see, the extra clip I had on video track one now shows through becoming the background since our main background up here has been removed. So I can show the jellyfish clip without that background. You can see everything just kind of turns black since there's nothing there anymore, nothing visible. And we can enable any background to go ahead and replace that. Now, uh, inside of your clip, you may decide you want some adjustments. So for instance, if I look really closely, you can see in kind of the grayer areas that um, this border does not look as natural as before. If I enable the, if I dis if I disable the Luma here, you can see that the cutoff line right about here had some of the brown grayish color on the outside and some on the inside. So it kind of had to blur together to form that transition. But when we enable the Luma here, it gets more of a hard cutoff. So inside of the matte finesse settings, we can play around a little bit with some of these sliders and get a better final result. So in cases like this, where we kind of want to blur things together a little bit more, and also if we ended up with any black gaps of the objects we're trying to keep can uh, help to remove some of that. So we increase the denoise a few points, and we can see that once again, this area is going to kind of blur together, won't be that hard cut off that we had before. So without the Luma Keyer, and then with it on, obviously it cuts away a lot of that light, but um, it also kind of blurs what's remaining a little bit more so it looks more natural. Uh, if you want to kind of remove these little white specks as well, uh, you could use the clean but you could use the clean black tool in order to remove some of those extra white and gray areas. So if I increase this clean black slider, you'll see more and more of those kind of spot brightness areas get cut off from the final result all the way at 100 and they're pretty much all gone. Uh, of course, that is going to have somewhat of an impact on the jellyfish as well. So you can see with it at zero. And then with that at 100, that a lot of these tentacle areas, it's going to cut into that a little bit. So as you use these sliders and you remove more of your clip, you got to watch out for accidentally removing what you actually meant to keep. So if you wanted to go even further than this, you could increase the black clip to the point where all of those spots are completely gone. And uh, we can go ahead, play our video back spacebar, and just make sure that all of those small spots at least are pretty much gone. So if that's the look you're going for, then uh, that can work out. It's hard to get it perfect, especially when those spots have similar brightness, but you can at least get pretty close to removing it just with this. If you really wanted to remove all of the extra outside areas, you could track a power window on the color page on this object. Uh, the jellyfish as it moves across the screen and then uh, filter anything outside of that color and then filter and then automatically key out anything outside of that power window area for the final output on the color page. I have some tutorials on my channel that can walk you through that if you're interested. Um, but for right now, that's probably okay for this clip. So we could go ahead and re-enable the video track and see how it looks with the new background. Obviously, the background doesn't match up this clip too well, but uh, the point is we can basically swap out anything we want to fill in that black space gaps. 
So uh, the next tool I want to cover is the HSL here. So that is hue, saturation, and luminance. And you can enable or disable any of those three that you want to use in the, fine key, in the final keying operation. Just drag your HSL keyer onto your clip. And you can see in keyer options, use hue, saturation, and luminance are already checked. So if you wanted to do this purely on color, you could uncheck saturation and luminance. But by removing saturation and luminance as other ranges to filter out part of this video, then basically it's then now it's going to be relying purely on the then now it's going to be relying purely on what color you select in order to remove the background. So let's use the pick tool. We'll give it a shot. We're going to be removing this sky. So I'm going to left click on it. Uh, we and we can see that it does remove part of the sky, but not everything. So we could also use this add picker tool to add this area over here, left click, kind of just clicking around until you get enough areas. As you can see, though, because we dropped saturation and luminance, it's not giving us the best result. So I'm going to re enable saturation and luminance, we're going to reset it, and I'm going to pick this area over here, and then the sky as well, and this final sky, and you can see it gives you kind of a better result. Now, in this case, it does kind of remove some of the stars from this flag. Um, so we want to drop down to the matte finesse settings and kind of clean this up a little bit. You can see also down here in this white area, there's just these black gaps. So that's exactly what the denoise slider is there to help remove. So we increase the denoise and you can see this flag kind of comes back into visibility. Uh, let's try with some other sliders clean black so we can kind of filter out that background area maybe we need more denoise so with the clean black we did basically get the background but it also uh kind of removed a little too much from this flag so i'm going to try dragging the white clip slider over to the left to bring back a little bit more and as we adjust these settings, we'll just kind of get a final result that we're pretty much happy with. So we probably could work on these sliders and get it to end up a little bit better. But let's say hypothetically that it was just impossible to remove this outer area. Another tool we'd have available to us, kind of similar to using the power window tracking and then only showing inside of the tracker, but simpler, uh, would be to just crop out the sides where this flag never touches so that we don't even have to deal with it. So let's go to the start of this clip. I'm going to hit play, and then we can see that the flag doesn't move its position. So we can pretty easily crop out everything to the right of here and not have to worry about it. So I'm going to go to the video tab on that clip. We're going to drop down the cropping menu. I'm going to take crop right, and I'm going to just pull this over to the right here. And now if we play our video, everything over here is no longer an issue. But there is this line that shows up after doing the cropping. So I'm actually going to take the softness slider and decrease this a little bit and try to kind of remove that in a sense. Let's move the crop a little bit over to the right. So when we do that crop, you can see that we still end up with this little line of brightness. So I'm going to increase the softness to kind of get rid of that. Okay, so it kind of phases that out. So now we can go to the start of this clip again, hit play. And as long as the objects never move into that cropping area, uh, we won't have any problem using this little cropping trick to kind of simplify our life. So we can still just go into effects. And if we need to play around with the denoise or anything like that a little bit more, we can work on that. I'm going to pull this video clip into track two. And now we can throw in another background. So I'll just use this one again. Let's go to the start where these two clips are layered on top of each other. Remember, the keyed out clip needs to be on top. So video track two and your background should be video track one. So go ahead and hit play here. And uh, we can see it's kind of okay. Uh, the pole looks a little bit at the real. So I guess we got to mess with the settings a little bit. So back in Matt Finesse. So back in Matt Finesse, we might want to bring back these white areas a little bit. So... I guess I'll try increasing the clean white slider and uh, this should help the pole look a little bit more natural. Also, I think the denoise may be too high here. It's kind of blurring that pole a little too much. So let's drop this down 
whatever we need to get the original object to come back into the shot. So ultimately we do kind of end up with a little bit of a soft glow around our object, but that's not too bad considering we have no green screen. The whole reason uh, for using a green screen is because that green screen green is something you wouldn't really see on a person on clothing. So it just becomes very easy to key out. It's more or less the same thing we're doing here. It's just that when you use a green screen, it's probably the easiest color to remove rather than trying to remove kind of a off blue sky color on a flag shot where the flag itself has some blues or whites, which are quite close to the sky blue as well. So that's why it's a little bit trickier when um, you're trying to key out a color that you just see everywhere else in your shot. And it takes a little bit more work in order to get it to look good. So let's go ahead and um, just hit play a little bit more. And you can see after we brought back the denoise, um, getting that in check a little bit, that the flag looks a lot more uh, fully visible. So uh, that is pretty much in a nutshell how you can use the Luma here and HSL here in order to remove backgrounds or other objects from your shot without having to rely on a green screen. So hopefully this video was helpful for some of you guys out there. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see all of you in my future video content.